Hello guys and welcome to another video. In this video we'll be checking the 8 core 3D Vcash CPU from AMD named the 7800X 3D and we will compare it to the 7700X and we will check to see if the 96 megabyte cache actually helps. This review will be focused mostly on uh, gaming. So one has more cache, the other one has higher frequency. Let's see if more cache is better than higher frequency in most games or all games games. What I want to point out is that the only difference between the memory settings is the TRS value. I was not able to lower it to 50. This is the only difference. The BIOS versions are the same. One thing to note is that the game is running on the same PC that it's also recording. What I can tell you is that when enabling max settings and path tracing in Cyberpunk 2077, I must confess that I can see the difference. I mean, I can see the difference when it comes to the 1% lows. The 3D vCache CPU improves the lows when enabling path tracing and makes the game a little bit more bearable as it brings the 1% lows in the mid 20s compared to the 7700X which has it around 6017. Again I'm talking about the 1% lows. When it comes to the averages in this game both CPUs perform more or less the same. What is impressive though is the power consumption. Check it out. It's below 50 watts. And most likely is that is the case because it, the frequency that it reaches is 5 gigahertz. So in this game, we are not losing performance with lower frequency. We are gaining better 1% lows with bigger cache. Now let's move to another game. In Hogwarts Legacy, I observed the same behavior. The 1% lows are a little bit better with the 3D Vcache chip. Also, I didn't have that many stutters. The game feels smoother with the 3D chip. Hogwarts Legacy is the other game that I felt the difference between these CPUs. The other games that I have tested, like this one, Plague's Tale Requiem, I didn't see any difference between the two CPUs. The performance was more or less the same when it comes to the 1% lows and the averages. Now let's look at a side-by-side -side comparison in Modern Warfare 2. What I want to point out is that the frame rates are more or less the same. But if you look at the power consumption, there is a big difference. One CPU consumes a lot less and delivers the same performance. As you can be seen, Modern Warfare 2 doesn't benefit at all from bigger cache. Now let's see some benchmark results from other games and see what is the trend in the games that I tested. So what can we see here is that there isn't a big difference between these two CPU. There aren't any big gains in any game that I tested. Now let's check the rest of the games to see if there are any difference difference at all. As you can be seen, there isn't any big difference when it comes to averages and the 1% lows. So at 1440p with bigger cache, we don't see that much improvement. But there are a few things that I want to point out. First, Cyberpunk. This game benefits a lot from the bigger cache. The averages are the same, but when we look at the 1% lows, we see a big difference. And the game felt smoother on the 3D vCache chip. Now let's move to a game where that 7700X performed better. Did I feel the difference? No. When you have 300 FPS, you don't really feel the difference between those CPUs. Now let's move to a game that a lot of people play. Probably not this one, but the Battle Royale. And there is no difference between these two CPUs. They perform the same, only the power consumption is different. As you can be seen here in this chart, at 1440p, the performance difference is minimal. There are a few games where the 7800X3D chip performs better as in Dead Space, as can be seen here, but the difference is not that big. So in most recent AAA games, there isn't a big difference between these CPUs. Dead Space is one of the games that showed an improvement when it comes to the averages alongside a Plague's Tale Requiem and Resident Evil 4. But in these games, I didn't feel the difference between these two CPUs. If I didn't have the chart, I would not know. But in Hogwarts Legacy, I actually felt the difference. It's like in Cyberpunk, it felt a little bit smoother. And I think this is a strong point. It offers better 1% lows. And this improves the experience in games with low frames, less stutters, higher 1% lows. This is what you will get in games with bigger L3 cache. So looking at the averages for these 13 games selected, we see just a minimal improvement from the 7700X to the 7800X3D chip. At 1080p, probably we would have had a bigger difference. But at 1440p, 
this is what we get. So looking at the 3D Vcash chip, we see a 121.75 FPS average and the 7700X 120.79. This is average across all 13 games tested. You could say no difference at all. Looking at the 1% lows, the 7700X pulls 88.5. 11 and the 7800 89.13 again practically no difference but looking at these averages you will not understand that in some games the 7800x produce better 1% lows and improve the gaming experience so the 7800x delivers a better experience when it comes to games with low fps now let's look at the price differences to see if the minor performance improvement goes hand in hand with the price so when searching on the internet for the 7800x 3d chip we see it in some shops it hovers around 500 the cheapest that i can find is this here close to 495 euros as usual prices in europe are a little bit higher as they include taxes and shops now are the new scalpers now let's have a look at the 7700x we see one at 359 euros and in another shop the price is a little bit lower we have 332 euros 0.9 so the 7800 x3d chip is almost 50 percent more expensive than the 7700x performance is not in line with the price so if we look again at the chart the picture is not that clear anymore in most games these two cpus perform the same you will not be able to tell them apart but there are a few games where the one percent lows are a bit better with the 7800x now Here's the question, would you buy a CPU or buy a better GPU? Would you go for a 4070 or a 4070 Ti? Would you choose a 7900XT or an XTX? That is the question that you have to ask when choosing between a 7700X and a 7800X3D at the current price. If money is no object, of course the 7800X3D chip is better, consumes less and performs more or less the same, and in some games having better 1% lows. So, what is my opinion about the 7800X3D chip? In almost all games, if I didn't have the stats on the screen, I would not tell the difference between the two CPUs. In most games, they perform the same. There are a few games where the 7700X performs a bit better, and a few other games that where the 7800X3D chip performs better. Keep in mind that 7700X benefits a lot from highly tuned memories. This brings it closer to the 7800X3D chip, this one doesn't benefit that much from tuned memories. I said that if I increase the memory frequency, it has better averages, but a bit lower 1% lows. To me, the 7800X 3D chip doesn't feel like the clear winner, at least in the games that I tested. What sets it apart from the 7700X is the power consumption. I have served in most games like 20 or 30 watts difference. I know that this review focused more on games, but I must say something. I can feel the difference between that 7700X and that 7800X 3D chip when it comes to multitasking. I mean, when editing the videos, I can see that, that the difference is there. Because of the higher frequency, the 7700X chip pulls ahead. And I can see the difference when editing this video. So, if you have an AIM5 platform and a CPU, I will not recommend it over the 7700X, like an upgrade. If you are moving to the AIM5 platform, I still would not recommend it over the 7700X. As the money difference, you can invest in a better GPU. I would recommend it only if you don't care about your budget and want the best. Because I think this CPU is probably the best when it comes to gaming for the AM5 platform. And that is my overall impression. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button.